Did anyone know in here that when you sign a consent waiver to get a tattoo, you're signing away your right to stop somebody from tattooing you anywhere from 30 to three, no, 30 to 5,000 times per minute. That's how many times the needle will be penetrating your skin. Does anyone in here have a tattoo? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> so today I wanna to talk about the whole process and I think it's really important for you guys to know because a lot of people kind of just go into it willy-nilly and don't know a lot of the facts behind it and can end up with a piece of work that could get infected and it's also important to know because some people might want to follow this like I did. Uh, I've been tattooing for over a year with my license uh, I'm certified and I have two apprenticeships through two different shops and today I'm going to talk about the stencil and getting the whole entire piece started. And then we'll talk about the sanitization, which I cannot emphasize enough, and the setup of the equipment, and then wrap it all up with the execution of the tattoo itself. So my sister was my client. For privacy reasons, I did it on a fake slab of fake skin. This is the stencil she chose. She wanted something feminine and something earthy that matched her personality. I did kind of just find it offline. Usually I would make one of my own, but this one was kind of short notice. Uh, I did work with her just as I would any other client. Uh, at first she didn't like the nostrils. I changed those and she didn't like the mouth. I had to give her what she wanted because if I don't, nine times out of 10, she's gonna go find somebody that will give her what she wanted instead of me and I lose my client. As you can see, I slowly outline it. Most people use a thermal printer with this paper. This is transfer paper. You can't just use regular transfer paper like in art. Uh, there's ink on this page. So after I sketch it, the ink goes through onto my parchment paper. Uh, I cut it out. Um, usually with bigger pieces, you have to cut lines into it to give it room to move to skin. Uh, you can't just lay stuff flat on your skin. It doesn't work. And then I clean the surface. So we're moving into the second stage. Uh, to clean, I use medical grade wipes. Obviously I'm not in the, my shop, so I can't use it. Uh, you sanitize your hands, you sanitize your workstation. For this, I just use 90% isopropyl alcohol. And then I lay down a sheet of Saran Wrap uh, just to keep away from all the splatters and it makes the cleanup process a lot easier. There I'm setting up the slab and cleaning it off just as you would a regular piece of skin that you're about to tattoo on. And I set up my ink. Now through this I use petroleum jelly. Uh, it helps my equipment stick down so I don't lose my grip. As well as you use it on the skin uh, for the needle, it glides a lot smoother. Uh, I'm setting up my equipment now. The pen is probably the hardest part to keep clean. Um, it has so many nooks and crannies because you gotta move it to move the needle out. So I wipe this down after I put my gloves on and then I wipe down each piece of equipment. Personally, for me, I use the foot pedal. Uh, a lot of people just use a straight machine that doesn't stop. I find that this is hard and it's a lot easier to mess up with. So as I set it up, I get the sleeves on and I'm gonna wrap the bottom with the tape. And I also wrap the top because when you wear the gloves, it's a very slick pen and it can easily slip through your hands and you can mess up a line or stab somebody and then it just becomes a big, big issue. Uh, using the needle can be hard. Um, this is a very, very important part. If you do not see a tattoo artist take your needle straight out of the packaging, do not let them tattoo you. This can spread AIDS or a multitude of STDs, infections transferred through blood, and it can be very dangerous to you and the person that you will be tattooing. You clean everything off with the isopropyl alcohol and then you can lay down your stencil. When I did it, my ink spread so it made it a lot harder <laughs> to be able to see my lines. Um, but I was still able to get it off. The fake skin's pretty thin, which is why I have this board underneath so I didn't completely destroy my desk when the needle went through. And then moving into the third step, once I set it up and I have my ink ready to go, I slowly just start doing the outline of the entire tattoo itself, following the lines. Uh, eventually I go back in with different shading needles 
And that part I cut out of the video just to keep it under time. But going through the outlines, darkening it, making sure I can see my lines first. Uh, this part, this is kind of the longer part of the entire video. Uh, this part can be kind of difficult. As you can see, once the needle hits the skin, it tends to splatter a lot. So it's really hard to follow your lines when you can't see what you're doing. When I set up, you can't really see, but I do keep a lot of paper towels down and I blot so I can see my lines. About a quarter of the way through the tattoo, uh, every quarter of the way, I take the alcohol and I wipe it down so I can see my work without all the spread out ink. And then, I just keep continuing until it looks satisfactory to the patient or client, I guess. I w after I wipe it with the alcohol, it gives them a clear view so they're able to see. And it also keeps it clean because the blood spills, which is obviously why I use the gloves and everything to clean it off. During this part, you got to make sure that your hand, you have a light hand, it can tend to mess people up a lot in the beginning when you start tattooing uh, for the simple fact you don't really realize how deep your needle is going into somebody's skin. Uh, like I said with the gun, when I twist, I can adjust how far the needle can go into your skin. And I keep my machine personally at 5 watts. Um, anything higher is going to speed it up and it makes it a little harder um, to hold the gun itself. As I said, it's already pretty slick, which is why it's wrapped up. And as I go through this, uh, I just keep blotting it. I have the jelly on there, which is why it's moving a lot smoother than if I were to. I tried my best so you guys could see. Uh, this is not how I would usually tattoo. I'm usually over it as I wanted to videotape it, it was a much harder to do. So this isn't a true representation of how it actually goes, but it's as good as I could get for this demonstration. This part's kind of long, so I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit. This is the part where I get to the end and I want to see if this is what I like for my client and then this is the part where I would show them, uh, hold up a mirror, show them the mirror. You have to wipe it all down to get all the ink off. Uh, it can be very hard because it stains on this a lot easier than it stains your skin. After this part, I just clean it up. Luckily I laid that uh, saran wrap down so it makes the cleanup a lot easier, all the splatters gone. After I put everything away, I just give it a quick wipe down, and then I go through and I wipe down each piece of equipment with the wipes uh, to get all the germs off, and I let them sit and dry out. And today, I talked about how to tattoo the whole process, going through the stencil, and then the sanitization and setup of all the equipment, and then I wrapped it all up with the execution of the tattoo and a few tips. Um, I think that this is really important, like I said, because a lot of people in our generation are getting a lot more tattoos than they used to, and knowing the steps to get a safe and clean tattoo is a lot better than not knowing anything at all, and if anyone's interested, then I would love to talk to you about it, because it is a very amazing side hustle, I cannot lie. Uh, you can get anywhere from four to five hundred dollars a piece, depending on what you work on. And next time you get a tattoo, just remember you could be getting punctured anywhere from 50 to 3,000 times a minute.